Hello, welcome back. This is Calculus by Dr. Oz. Today, uh, we're going to practice uh, power series with a different application. So essentially, when you have a power series uh, for a given function, you can also reproduce power series of the derivatives of the function, and in fact, even the antiderivatives of uh, the given function. So, uh, so the question is like, uh, you can do like, uh, the term by term differentiation or integration uh, for the power series, but what happens to the interval of convergency for the reproduced infinite series? Uh, one good news is that uh, uh, when you take the derivative or, or when you look at the antiderivative of the given power series, you will get exact same interval of convergency except the endpoints. So analyzing the endpoints for each reproduced uh, power series is the core of what we're going to do next. We have two exercises and we have a long way to go. I'm going to split this into two videos and, and, and uh, you will have one for uh, each exercise, one video for each exercise. All right, let's get started. So here we go. I have the, the power series x over 3 to the power of n. I know the interval of convergence is negative 3 and 3. And I also know, in, fa <coughs> in fact, that I'm sorry, uh, that um, x... Uh, negative 3 and 3 are not included in the analysis. You can check that by yourself, uh, even through the geometric series test. Uh, um, you, you can show that um, at negative 3 and 3, uh, uh, we don't have any convergency. So what I'm going to do now is to find f prime, and I'm going to do it like by term by term uh, differentiation. So let's just do that. When you, so, well, well, by the way, I have to be very careful about the lower limit here. Okay, so let's let's think about it. So I'm going to put n down, I'm going to use a power rule, x minus 3 to the power of n minus 1. I subtract 1 from the power. So since this power is already n minus 1, I can't start the sum from 1 because so I can't start the sum from 0 because then this power becomes negative 1 and it's not the term by term differentiation or term by term uh, uh, yeah, uh, differentiation of this series. Let me just clean this part just to show you what I mean by term by term differentiation. So here the very first term is 1 plus x over 3, x over 3 squared, and on and on and on. Term by term differentiation would provide you like the very first term to be 0, but the next term is going to be 1 third. And to get to 1 third here, you have to, uh, you have to start uh, the sum Let's see, one third mm, and from one, and starting from one, okay? N over three, in fact, the derivative is N over three, okay? Because the, the, the derivative of uh, inner part is one over three, okay? So anyway, when N equals one, this, this whole term uh, becomes uh, one, and, 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 and now I have one third. And then the next one, obviously, you're gonna have two times um, X over three, but then you have one third coming out uh, as the derivative of the inner part. You should have two over three. Let's see if we get to two over three. When n equals two here, this is already at two over three. And when n equals uh, two, this power becomes just one. So there you go, you have x over three. So, uh, so to sum up, uh, just for you uh, to have some heads up for future, uh, as a future reference, uh, when you take the derivative, you should start to sum from one. Let's do the f double prime just to see what changes here. Um, I'm going to put the lower limit again. Uh, uh, I'm going to put nothing for the lower limit for the time being. And I'm going to just like differentiate this term by using the power rule. So it's n and minus 1 uh, over 3, obviously. But I have another 1 third coming out of the, uh, the, the derivative of the inner part. So it's 9, so 3 squared, x over 3 to the power of n minus 2. Okay, so, well, f double prime is a derivative of f prime, so it's 0, 0, uh, 2 over 9. So the very first term should be 2 over 9, and, and without any x, so this should start from 2. Okay? All right. How about uh, the, the antiderivative of f? Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's just not put anything for the lower limit for the time being. I am going to integrate this term this time. And you can use the uh, u substitution if you want to, but I'm gonna write it in one shot. You can pause the video at this moment and then integrate x over uh, three to the power of n uh, by yourself. Let me just put dx here. 
okay? So x over three to the power of n plus one divided by uh, n plus one, right? But uh, because of the du, if you call u to be x over three, uh, du is gonna be one third dx, so you will have three coming along with that, okay? All right, so when you integrate, uh, it should look like this. I'm integrating, look, I'm integrating this term here, right? Term by term. So the first one should be x, x squared over six. This is x squared over nine, so x cubed over 27, and on and on and on, and plus c, obviously. Eventually, you're gonna add plus c, and let me add that c here uh, in the beginning, okay? So, all right. So let's see what n should be. Well, the very first term here, uh, uh, he, the very first term, and I should also, by the way, add c here. So let me just uh, clean this and add c first, okay? And then add the infinite sum, how about that? Okay, so three times x over uh, three to the power of n plus one divided by n plus one, okay? Well, the very first terms are the same because uh, that's how I set it up. The next term is going to be x. To get an x here, n should start from 0, right? Because if n equals 0, this is x over 3. And this is 1, this is 3. 3 over 1 is 3. And then uh, x over 3 times 3 is x. Here we go, I get x. To get this term here, n equals 1. So that means 3 over 2, uh, you have 3. You have x over 3, you have squared of this, right? And then you have um, you have 1 plus 1, 2 here. So eventually you get x squared over 6. So so all I'm going to do here is, uh, let me just uh, clean this, like this, this, okay? So I'm going to start n uh, from uh, 0, okay? So now, uh, what do I know about... Uh, the interval of convergences of uh, these series. Well, to start with, to start with, let me just clean a little bit. To start with, okay, since I have the power series expressions for each, I can disregard them, okay? All right, so this one uh, had the interval of convergence negative three and three. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and conclude that uh, this series here is gonna come with uh, the interval of convergence negative three over three, uh, radius to be 3, obviously, and then this one is the same, and as well as this one. This is simply coming out of this uh, fact, okay? What needs to be done is to check each infinite series uh, at the end points, okay? So this is um, 1 plus 1, okay? I'm missing the 1 here, okay? We have to check each infinite series at the end points. So here we go. Uh, carefully looking at this one here. If you plug in 3 or negative 3 for x, okay, then that quantity, that parentheses quantity raised to the power of n plus 1 is going to be either 1 to the power of n minus 1 or minus 1 to the power of n minus 1. So it's going to be either an alternating series or simply the series n over three, okay? So both series divergent. Let me tell you why. Because the a n part here, the a n part here does not converge to zero. Either you use the n term test or the, the alternating series test. Uh, the conclusion is that a n doesn't go to zero because a n converges to infinity. That makes uh, both endpoints uh, divergent uh, for the power series of f prime. So I'll just keep this as is, okay? This is a check mark, okay? I don't add the endpoints for uh, convergency here. How about the other uh, f double prime? Well, if I plug in three or negative three, again, this is gonna be either uh, one or negative one, okay? So I'm just uh, clean this part, yeah. This is gonna be either uh, uh, one, right? Either one or negative one to the power of uh, n minus two. So it's gonna make the series either like n, n minus one over nine itself only, or uh, an alternating series minus one to the n minus two, uh, n, n minus one, uh, and three squared, okay? 
because of the same reason, uh, if, it's, if this is 1 by the n term test, this a n is going to approach infinity. Okay, that makes this series uh, divergent. And if it's an alternating series, then, then a n here is not going to converge to 0. Uh, for the same reason, uh, uh, this series uh, will be divergent. Okay, because the limit of a n would not converge to 0. Okay, for the same reason, I'm going to keep uh, uh, the interval of convergence as is. Okay, so now let's let's carefully look at uh, this infinite series here. When you put, let me just copy that down uh, to the next slide. All right, here we go. I just copied that uh, infinite series down together with the integrating constant here. So let me just add the integrating constant here as well. So I plugged in negative uh, 3, 4 x and uh, plus 3, 4 x. Okay. So in one case, I got the alternating series and I got just uh, the series 3 over n plus 1. So here we go. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but hopefully you, you can pause the video and then uh, think about it by yourself. So you're going to apply the alternating uh, series test. And I can tell you that this a n uh, has the limit 0 as n approaches infinity. And that a n is a decreasing, non-increasing, uh, non-increasing uh, sequence that makes uh, two of the conditions of the alternating series test satisfied. So I'm going to put a check mark here that x equals negative 3 makes uh, the, the, the power series uh, convergent. Okay, by the alternating series test. Okay, so for this one, uh, you can uh, apply the limit comparison test or the integral test. Either limit comparison test or the integral test. Okay, whichever you like to go with. Uh, I don't care. If you use the limit comparison test, compare this series to uh, series one over n, the harmonic series you will see that both uh, series uh, uh, have the same behavior. In fact, harmonic series is divergent, and, 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 and this makes, uh, it makes this series divergent as well. If you use the integral test, the integral is going to diverge. Okay? So uh, the left end is a nicely behaving one, and, but the right end is not. So you can go back here and finish the analysis here that this left end has to be closed. Okay? So, uh, and then this will uh, still be open because um, uh, at 3, the, the infinite series, uh, the power series uh, is divergent. Okay. All right. I think that uh, is uh, the analysis uh, required uh, to take care of uh, this problem. Uh, we did, uh, uh, I think, uh, we included everything. All right. Uh, for part B, please continue to uh, the next video. Bye.